from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Sportsline. Hey there, Sportsline on your television. Steve Lehman here with you. Glad you are here with us on this rainy Tuesday night on News Channel 5 Plus. Supposed to be a big night for the Nashville Sounds opening night at First Tennessee Park. The 40th season for the Sounds in Nashville, their third year at First Tennessee Park. But so far, not a lot of fun over there at the ballpark. They are trying to survive this huge rainstorm. Still not underway. Now 8 o'clock. First pitch was supposed to be 635. They are hoping to get it in tonight. And the rain is supposed to move through sometime here shortly. So there will be baseball played, but not exactly the festive night they were hoping for. A lot of fans, I'm sure, have left at this point. It's going to be soggy and damp whenever they do take the field. But they do want to get baseball in tonight at First Tennessee Park, and they hope to do just that against the Oklahoma City Dodgers, a rematch of their playoff series from last year when the Dodgers beat the Sounds in five games after Nashville posted the best record in the Pacific Coast League during the regular season. A lot of that Nashville team is back this season. So if you're looking for good baseball this summer, besides the fact that First Tennessee Park is just a, a beautiful, beautiful ballpark, and a great place to watch a game. If you watch some of our stuff earlier today, you know, we were by the pro shop where you can get all sorts of merchandise, souvenir. They've got great food. Sight lines are terrific if you're just trying to watch the game. Then they got the band box out there in right field. The terrific area with bags and heck, I was playing miniature golf on the news live earlier tonight. Uh, it's just a great place to go out with your friends or take your kids, whatever you want to do to hang out if the weather's nice and unfortunately tonight that is just not cooperated for the sounds but they do hope to get baseball in at some point also in a rain delay at this point vanderbilt and tennessee tech they actually got started at 6 30 tonight over on the artificial playing surface at hawkins field but the rain just so heavy that they went into rain delay they're hopeful to get that game done as well before the end of the night so that is your update on baseball meanwhile the nba wrapping up the regular season tomorrow night it'll be interesting to see what happens there especially in the eastern conference i mean the west might be fascinating with some individual performances from james harden and, and russell westbrook but i think by and large you're looking at a warriors team that is clearly the best team in the western conference in the east everybody thought the Cavs were that team but they're actually behind the Celtics right now for the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. What a job Brad Stevens has done with that team. It's not nearly the roster that what Cleveland has, but they've figured out a way to be consistent and win games night in and night out. And that might be enough to get them the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. That probably doesn't mean a whole lot. I mean, we saw it just a week or so ago. Cleveland went into Boston and just cleaned their clocks in that game. So even if the Cavs don't have home court advantage, you think with LeBron and those guys, they've been through the battles enough. Last year, as a matter of fact, they clinched every series on the way to the NBA championship on the road. So they're not going to be scared if they don't have home court advantage at some point during this playoff run. But obviously, they would like to have it. And more importantly, I think you have to ask the question, can you just turn it on down the stretch? Can you just turn it on in the postseason? Because this has been a Cavs team that's really struggled late in the season. So when the playoffs come, and it really counts, are they just going to be able to flip the switch? Real question for the Cavs heading into the postseason. Grizzlies likely going to be in the seven seed spot. They will take on the Spurs in all likelihood in round one out west. Then you talk about the Stanley Cup playoffs, which begin tomorrow night. For the Predators and Blackhawks, it'll begin on Thursday night in Chicago, 7 o'clock. And kind of a similar question maybe to be asked for the Blackhawks. Can this team just flip the switch? Because down the stretch of the season, they had nothing to play for. They lost their final four games of the regular season. Very uncharacteristic for them. Struggled to score. Struggled to stop anybody. Just didn't look like they were very interested. Will they be ready to go from game one on Thursday night? At some point, they're going to figure it out. And they're going to get going. 
but can they just, after coasting for the final week or two of the regular season, can they just walk into the playoffs and literally flip the switch when Jim Cornelison sings the anthem on Thursday night at the United Center and be ready to go against the Predators? We'll see. They've done it before in the past. They've certainly shown that they have an ability to navigate these playoffs, unlike just about anybody else in the National Hockey League. But it's not always easy to do that. And the Preds have been fighting for so long to secure playoff position and then fight for seeding. I think they're going to be ready to go. And as I said last night on this very program, I think these first two games in Chicago are critical for the Preds. This is a Blackhawks team that you desperately want to beat. Your fan base desperately wants to beat. But historically, you haven't always played well with them. And even when you have played well, you've lost games in overtime. You've lost games on tough bounces. They just haven't been able to get over the hump, specifically in the postseason. If you go up there and get beat up, especially beat up badly in the first two games and come back 0-2, I don't know what the level of belief around here will be. But if you can go up there and win a game, you better believe the Predators will believe. You better believe the Bridgestone Arena will be buzzing on Monday night for Game 3 when the Blackhawks come down here. These first two games, to me, are critical for the Predators' chances To get one, to get one of them. You don't have to sweep by any means, but get one and get yourself in this series when it shifts back here to Nashville with a chance to really take control at that point. Get that. Find out. Phone lines are open tonight. 737-7767 is the number. We would love to hear from you, get you in on the conversation. We'll hear from several predators as well as they gear up to get ready to go to the playoffs. One other note about the Preds today. Colin Wilson, not on the ice at practice. Neither was Callie Yarncroke. Those would be big losses if they're unable to go, and right now they stand as questionable for game one on Thursday. I'm not positive about this, but I'm pretty sure Colin Wilson has to play to morph into playoffs Colin Wilson. This guy has been so good when they've gotten in the postseason. Talk about turning on a switch. He has been incredible the last two years in the playoffs. Five goals two years ago in a six-game series against the Blackhawks. Last year, he was great in the two series against the Ducks and the Sharks. But questions perhaps now about his fitness and his health going into the the postseason. And then Cali Yarncroke, 15 goals this year. He is maybe the most versatile guy on the Predators' lines. He can play as a centerman. He can move out to one of the wings. You can put him on different lines from the top all the way down to the middle lines. If he can't go, that's another costly loss for this team, and it takes away some valuable experience. Uh, one of the things that makes the Preds different than two years ago against this Blackhawks team, and look, the Blackhawks have just been rolling. They've added a few new pieces, but essentially since this rant run began in 2010, the Blackhawks have largely been the same team. Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taze, Corey Crawford, and Nett. The core has been there for them. They've got tons of experience. But two years ago when the Preds played them, That was the first playoff experience for a lot of these guys. I mean, first real experience for Roman Yossi. First experience total for Philip Forsberg. Callie Yarncroke. A bunch of these young guys. That was their first real chance in the playoffs. Well, now they've played three series. They've been in two game sevens. They've played the Blackhawks already. One of the things that is sort of the Preds calling card going into this series is that they're experienced now, that they can rely on what they've gone through over 20 playoff games in the last two seasons to be ready to go against the Blackhawks this time around. Well, if you take Wilson and Yarncroke out of the lineup, those are two guys that have a lot of that experience. And you're probably subbing in with guys like Kevin Fiala and Colton Sissons, guys who don't have that experience. So that is something very critical to keep an eye on. And remember, health oftentimes plays a huge role in these playoff series. Just two years ago in this series against the Blackhawks, let's not forget that then-captain Shea Weber 
busted up his knee, essentially blew it out on a hit in game two and was lost for the series, would have been lost for the rest of the season. And Mike Fisher, who was the assistant captain and now is the captain for the Predators, also got hurt early in that series, missed a couple games in the middle before returning and, and playing and not quite 100% the rest of the way. Those injuries were critical against the Blackhawks team that obviously has tons of firepower, obviously knows how to win in the postseason. Health will be extremely important in this playoff series. And right now there's questions about two key members of the Preds, which has to be a bit concerning. Maybe not alarming yet. They still have a day of practice tomorrow, morning skate Thursday, go Thursday night. So there's time. But it's got to be a bit concerning if you're Peter Laviolette or a Preds backer to see those guys not on the ice two days before the playoffs begin. We want to get you in on the conversation tonight about the Predators. We can talk NBA playoffs, start a baseball, whatever you want. By the way, awesome scene last night at Wrigley Field in Chicago. They had to wait out a rain delay of their own to start things off. But terrific ceremony. At times, I felt like the ceremony itself was going to take as long as it took the Cubs to win a World Series, 108 years, but well earned. I mean, if anyone was going to do it and anybody deserved to extend it out like that, it was the Cubs. They finally got it last night. They put up the banners. They had some nice tributes to other cool things in history and raising a few other banners along the way, brought up back some old timers. The players were a huge part of it. Then they emerged from the Ivy and right field, walking in with the World Series trophy. Just a really cool scene in Chicago. And then they played baseball. Not a ton of people hung around till after midnight to see the end of it, but Anthony Rizzo delivers a walk-off hit, which just continued the party on the north side last night. And tomorrow now they get the rings, the 108 diamond rings one for every year of the curse 108 diamonds in each of these rings tomorrow that'll be interesting and you just kind of imagine the party is going to continue to go in chicago for quite some time even though a new season has begun again we want to hear from you guys tonight get in on this conversation we can go anywhere you want with it 737-7767 is the number and we begin tonight with brian brian good evening you are first up on sports line Hey, if I want to go down to the sounds, it sounds like an afternoon game it would be the easiest with traffic and uh, house parking. And what if I had a cab drop me off and pick me up uh, with my lady friend later? And uh, would, if I wanted to get a day game in the afternoon or on a weekend afternoon, which would you recommend? And uh, if it's during the weekdays, can I get out of there by 3.30? They do not have many weekday games. I think there's only a couple weekday afternoon games throughout the course of the season, and I don't know offhand exactly when those are. They do have an afternoon game coming up this Sunday. So if you get a nice day, and I think the forecast right now looks like it's supposed to be nice, that is a 2.05 start time against the Colorado Springs Sky Sox. Sunday. Usually anytime it's a matinee game, the crowds are good. But there's seats available, so you should be able to get in. As far as parking goes, there's, there's parking around. You've got the parking deck out beyond the outfield. you got a couple lots right around the, the field. I like your idea of taking an Uber or taking a cab down there and getting dropped off and finding one after the game to avoid the parking mess. But there, there are spaces down there. So if you want to drive the car, a lot of people will do it. And there are spaces that you can find and from what I know and what I've seen in my experience, it's not too hard to get out of there after the games. But, you know, whenever you go into a game, you want to allow for probably a three-hour game or so and then get to your car and get on your way somewhere. So a 2 o'clock game on Sunday, you're probably uh, posting up for most of the afternoon to do that. But if it's a nice day, that can be a lot of fun. How are the concession stands? Session stands are very good. Good food there, good ballpark food. It's really a fun ballpark. And as some of my hits tonight, even in the rain, sort of address this. There are great sight lines at the ballpark. It's a terrific place to watch a game. But then there's a bunch of other things. They've got cool suites if you want to do that or, or get a, a bunch of friends to go in on, with, on it with you. They've got 
Uh, tonight they had dueling pianos upstairs, which doesn't happen all the time, but they do different things all the time. I think that band box area in right field is a great place if you want to go and have a beer with a friend or something like that. They've got the bags out there. They've got miniature golf. You can do a lot of fun things while you are out at First Tennessee Park. It is truly a one-of-a-kind baseball experience and has made Sounds Baseball much more interesting. The numbers over the past few years, the two years since they've been in the ballpark, is they've doubled their attendance average from when they were in the final few years at Greer Stadium. So a much better experience and I think the city's really caught on to that because they're showing up in much better numbers than they had for many years over at Greer Stadium. All right, I'm going to check out either this Sunday or I'm going to check the schedule for a uh, weekday one maybe if I can't make it Sunday. Sounds good, Brian. Thanks for the call. As always, phone lines are open. 737-7767. We've got to take a break. We will come back and continue on. Phone lines wide open for you, or we can get to some more hockey talk on the other side right here on News Channel 5 Plus.